Here we are at warm, balmy and sunny, fortunately, Sepang International Circuit for the opening round of the 2018 GT Asia Series. Cars leaving pit lane, getting ready to uh, go around and line up behind the safety car for a start. 15 minutes until the start of the opening round of the 2018 season. Solid field, qualifying fantastic earlier in the day. Two sessions, 15 minutes, 10 minutes apart. And at the close of the opening qualifying session, it came down to a great battle between absolute racing teammates, Frankie Chung and Adelie Fong. And on top of that, we also had the uh, AAS Motorsport entry of Kandika Siri, the reigning TCR Asia Series champion. He has stepped into a twin turbo V8 powered Bentley Continental GT3 for the 2018 season of Thailand Super Series and the GT Asia Series. Of course, a combined field this weekend. Drivers entered in both championships, the first three events of the year, which includes Buram in June and also the mighty Bangsen Grand Prix in mid-July. That will uh, also register as a round for the, uh, T uh, the GT Asia Series. Sorry, just trying to organise the, uh, the stream here. And uh, going out on screen at the moment, that is one of the GTC entries, Sam Cheng and Stephen Chan from Chinese Taipei. They are sharing the Arrows Racing Porsche 911 GT3 Cup entry. So we're talking about qualifying. It was a great battle between the Absolute Racing teammates and Kennedy Kasiri. He's going to share that car during the year with uh, Vudi Korn in Thrapuvasak, who uh, those of you who are students of GT Asia will remember drove with Absolute Racing in a Bentley Continental GT3, the very same car in fact, over recent seasons of GT Asia series and in fact was a regular visitor to the podium and uh, part of that was due to his co-driver, of course Englishman Duncan Tappy, who's moved on to a lot of uh, other GT championships around the world. So we see teams getting themselves organised to go out on the grid. We've got about uh, 11 minutes to go before the race proper will get underway. See that gorgeous Orange, McLaren Orange for Tana Motorsport uh, 650S GT3. Chonsawat and Aiden Reed, the young driver from Australia, will share the duties in that car as the field gets themselves organised. A couple of the new 2018 Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo Evos on the grid, one there on right of screen, and uh, another just on the left of screen there, which will be run by. Uh, New Zealander John O'Lester, who has been a regular in Asia over recent years. Last couple of seasons been involved in the Sepang, sorry, in the Super GT Championship in Japan. Sepang just taking my mind off the job. 5.542 kilometres, 15 turns. The Herman Tilke design circuit, of course, a regular on the Formula One circuit every year. That's why it was built initially. It hasn't been uh, a Formula One host this uh, last 12 months. In fact, last year was the last one. This year will be the first year it's not on the Formula One calendar, but the host, of course, of the Malaysian Formula One Grand Prix and probably more popular, the annual MotoGP event. You can see the pole sitter in the white, grey and red entry, the number five entry. Not used to seeing these colours with Adley Fong. A former Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup champion, one of his long-time rivals immediately behind him. We've seen that all-blue entry a number of times over recent years. Of course, that is the car shared by Frankie Chung and Sun Jing Zhu, long-time partners in crime when it comes to uh, Asian motorsport. And there is the big Bentley Continental GT3 that is being driven this weekend by Kennedy Kasiri. And he has done a very good job in the S Cola PTT by AAS Motorsport entry. And we expect to see him do a very solid job this time round. Of course, uh, each round of the GT Asia series, as it has been in past seasons, includes a compulsory pit stop mid-race. So between the 25-minute and the 35-minute mark of the race, 
Cars will come down pit lane. There's a number of entries like uh, Kasiri, although that is yet to be uh, finally confirmed that uh, Woody Corn won't jump into the seat. Certainly at this stage, all the mileage has been done by Kasiri. Drivers will come down pit lane, affect their pit stop in a minimum pit stop time. Now, depending on driver rankings, because we have a range of driver rankings from FIA classified bronze, silver, gold. I don't think we have any platinum drivers in the field, although Carlo Van Dam, who's uh, sharing the Singer Motorsport Ferrari 458 GT3 is certainly a driver of great calibre and competes in the European events of the uh, Blancpain series. So he may well be uh, ranked that highly. So depending on the driver gradings, some drivers will stop in pit lane for a little bit longer. That just evens up the field. It's worked out very, very nicely in past seasons. In fact, if you think back, remember that dramatic a three wide finish at Shanghai at the close of a 60 minute race. I think it was the 2016 GT Asia series where three cars, Ferrari, uh, I've, now I'm going on the memory, Ferrari, Audi, and I think Lamborghini, three wide, separated by uh, just over a tenth of a second at the line. That's what you want to see. That's why driver gradings and pit stop additional time penalties are invoked upon teams to ensure that the level of competition at the end of the race keeps everybody as close as possible. There is Adelie Fong, back from the United States where he ran in uh, the GT competition over there in a Bentley Continental for Absolute Racing, back behind the wheel of an Audi R8 LMS GT3 with Philippines' own Vincent Florendo, who uh, has been a past competitor in the Audi Cup Series. There is the man who took the title of the TCR Asia Series champion for the Liquid Molly Team Engsler Volkswagen operation last year, but very much a Bentley man in season 2018. So looking forward to a good start. Weather's been clear all week, although terribly humid. People up and down pit lane have uh, passed comment on that. Of course, the locals know what it's like around this time of year at Sepang. There is the mighty blue Tilka supported absolute racing entry of Frankie Chung, a pioneer of motorsport in China. Getting a bit long in the tooth now, but still uh, very, very competitive. We see him regularly jump into this bright blue Audi R8 for absolute racing and punch out incredible one lap stints to uh, set pole. He didn't do that this time around. In fact, he couldn't match the pace of Kasiri and Adelie Fong in the end. Had been the pace setter earlier in the weekend. But the former DTM driver, former Le Mans driver, and certainly a uh, committed competitor behind the wheel of an Audi R8 LMS, has done a great job to be on the second row alongside this man. We were talking about him earlier, Carlo Van Dam. The Dutchman has been very quick in a variety of cars over the years. Drives with another um, uh, Birembakti. So I'm just thinking, uh, Pity Birembakti is his teammate, has been in the past seasons of the GT Asia series, and of course a two-time winner. Fuji, they were particularly good at in past seasons, but uh, both Pity and uh, Carlo Van Dam are regulars on the European scene these days, but Carlo alongside Vorovod Birembakti from Singer this weekend in the 458. This should be Aidan Reid, the young Australian driver, driving with Chonsawat in the Fatana Motorsport, McLaren 650S GT3. Great to see the uh, McLaren back in action in GT Asia. Of course, a couple of seasons ago, there were a number of them getting around in Triple F racing colours. And uh, nice to see that Vatana has picked up one of those. So if we just jump back onto the qualifying times for this session. Didn't quite break the outright... GT3 lap record. That's still held by local driver Mitch Gilbert by a few tenths of a second. But Adley Fong did his very, very best. Crossed the line with a 203.896 to set the fastest ever GT Asia Series lap for a GT3 car around the Sepang International Circuit. Kennedy Kassiri in the S Cola by AAS Motorsport Bentley was second fastest, 15 one hundredths of a second slower. Then it was Frankie Chung. He was 35 one hundredths of a second slower and he leads row three alongside Carlo Van Dam with a 204.3.
that was uh, just under half a second off the pace. That uh, looks like it may be Kadisak Kasiri. So that's the second of the Kasiri brothers from Thailand. Very, very accomplished driver, driving with Burt Birambakti in the third of the absolute racing Audis. Fifth was the Vatana Motorsport McLaren with Aiden Reed at the wheel, 2047. Sixth, the Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo Evo, driven by uh, Afik Yazid, another of the Malaysian stars. That is Tenart Sathan. Sathan Theriacal, who is a former driver with the GT Asia series, and Tenart's uh, done a great job during practice and the early stages of qualifying. In fact, both legs are qualifying for uh, race one and race two, which will come tomorrow. He was on top of the uh, timesheets early and has been able to uh, put his car into position number eight, so on the outside of the fourth row. Position nine was uh, Jack Lemvard, another of the rising young stars of Thai Motorsport, driving for the Vatana team in the Lamborghini Gallardo. Alongside him, John O'Lester, the New Zealander, the journeyman, who's done an awful lot of GD competition in recent years and, of course, was part of the Golf Porsche team in the GD Asia series in a Porsche 997 GD3 a couple of years back. That is the number 90 entry, position number 11. Akihiro Asai will be behind the wheel of that car after the pit stop. But uh, 207.29, 3.4 seconds off the pace for the number 90 entry. So there's two Guiados, one's an FL2 GD3, the other one's an REX. So they are uh, writer engineering built cars. Of course, the forerunner to the Huracan GT3. Now, there's a car very popular with uh, Thailand Super Series entrance, and of course, those fans of the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup will recognise that helmet. That is, of course, Daniel Bilski, the Australian former AM Cup and uh, Masters Cup champion. He uh, is driving alongside Hank Kicks, the boss of the Be Quick Racing Operation. I can see TCR Korea's Hong Sik Jong walking down the pit lane so he is here with great interest to see how all of this plays out of course the fourth event of the 2018 tcr asia series season will be alongside the new tcr korea championship at korea international circuit in yongham we have of course been there before a couple of times kicked off the start of the 2016 season in south korea so clearing the grid the one minute board is up Cars will take their place behind the safety car. A couple of the Team Thailand, Toyota Team Thailand 86 V8s are in the field in the GTC category. They qualified in positions 14, 15, position 16. Aleph Hamden in the 997 GT3 Cup car for B Quick Racing. Then the Singer Motorsport Team Thailand entry, Tin Sritchrai, a winner four times last year in the TCR Asia Series, has switched across full time now to the GT competition. He is driving alongside Tanavud Birambakti in a car that's got a livery almost identical to uh, Voravuds, the 458 Italia GT3. Of course, it's a 458 challenge car. Sean Varney will start the Unix TR Motorsport Racing Porsche 991 GT3 Cup car from position 18 and bring up the rear of the field Stephen Chan in the Arrows Racing Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car the GTC, a GT Asia series rather, in the GTC category. So, Adley Fong, a man from Hong Kong, 2013 Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup champion, race winner in the Pirelli World Challenge in America, has been a multiple race winner for Bentley and Absolute Racing in past seasons. That looks like Alef Hamden starting from the pit lane, so uh, he may well be kept there until after the rolling start start for the GT Asia Series and Thailand Super Series, get everybody up to speed, less pressure on the clutch and the drive line to get off the line in an awful hurry. Most competition worldwide these days, certainly the GT competition is a rolling start, this is no different. So we get into the opening round of the 2018 season, mid-2015 was the last time the GT Asia Series was here for a three hour endurance race. At that stage, that was won by the BBT Ferrari 458 pairing of Anthony Liu and Davide Rizzo. They're still circulating various championships around the world in their uh, red and yellow, iconic red and yellow Ferrari 488 as it is this time around. You can see the full field 
out after qualifying. Everybody's there. Good to see Aleph Hamden has uh, got the car on the grid. It would have been a disappointment not to see him in the field. Getting ready to go for what will be a very interesting 60 minute race. Set up uh, a second race, of course, that will come tomorrow afternoon. Scheduled for 2.30 local time. There is Aleph Hamden. Very successful driver in uh, certainly in production car competition in the Malaysian Super Series. He will be looking forward to getting some valuable miles classified in the GTC category. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six GTC cars led by the Toyota Team Thailand Toyota 86 V8. They are the category leaders at present. And following them up next one in line would be the Be Quick Racing Team entry of Aleph Hamden. So we'll be hoping very much that he can get out and be part of this field. Set up a new season and a new concept with the future of GT Asia and certainly strengthening the depth of the Thailand Super Series throughout season 2018. There is one of the Toyota 86 V8s. That would be the... Uh, Ferrari 458 Challenge car with Tim Stritcher at the wheel immediately behind you. See how uh, that is a near identical livery to the car that uh, is starting further forward in this field. Looks like they've got their uh, control Michelin tyres up to temperature will be ready to go off the line. This will be a new initiation uh, for Kennedy Kassiri to go head to head with somebody like Adley Fong, very, very experienced campaigner in GT competition around Asia and around the world. Of course, a uh, former test driver for one of the F1 teams. He's on the inside. Now it'll be a great drag race down to turn one. We're getting ready to go. The opening round of the 2008 GT Asia Series season. There's a lot of anticipation for this one. Adley Fong left of screen. Kennedy Kassiri right of screen. The Evo, the Lambo has really got a great jump. So too, Frankie Chung and the all blue car. And you can see the orange McLaren. But it looks like Carlo Van Dam's gone around the outside. It'll be a brake duel into turn one. Through the tight right, then left-hander. Carlo has got the inside, and he's going to take the position away and close the door on Kennedy Kassiri. Looks like uh, Adley Fong's held on to position number three. He's certainly lost a lot of places. And uh, Frankie Chung has gone from the second row back to position six, under fire from Aiden Reed there in the all-orange Vatana Motorsport McLaren. Oh, that's very tight there. That was uh, Candice Kassiri trying to go up the inside of Frankie Chung as they ran through turn four. And uh, Kennedy Kassiri in front. Well, what's interesting here is Carlo Van Dam is very much a mentor and a driver coach for a lot of these young rising Thai stars. And Kennedy Kassiri, Candice Kassiri and Tin Sritra have very much come from the school of thought from uh, Carlo Van Dam. So it'll be interesting to see just how Carlo can deal with this. This is the uh, the teacher and the student. What does Kennedy Kassiri have in store? Because it looks like it's taken a lap or so to get the control Michelins up to temperature and really get the pace out of them early. So you'd expect that uh, the really quick times will come in about lap two or three and see whether or not that is the opportunity for Kennedy Kassiri to uh, get around the car in front of him. What he also has to remember, of course, is that uh, Carlo Van Dam will hand across to Vorovod Birembakti, who doesn't have the pace of the Dutch driver. Yellow flag being displayed. Interesting to see what that's all about. In fact, the pace now with uh, Adelie Fong weaving all over the circuit. He's trying to get temperature up. Safety car. So something's happened around the circuit that we've missed. I'm looking at the timing monitor to see whether or not it will update us, but certainly the safety car board is out. The yellow flags were shown, and of course Adelie weaving to keep temperature in the tyres, so they'll be hoping that uh, this gets restarted fairly quickly because the one thing they don't want to do is lose that uh, tyre temperature now they've gone to all that trouble to get it going. Ah, 
Okay, so one of the Team Toyota 86 V8s has come off the circuit. That's the 38 entry. That'll be Natapong, who would have started that car. Supong take, would have taken over for the second leg. So I'll try and recover that. So that's uh, not really worked in anybody's favour there. Tyre temperature will start to uh, drop off a little bit again because it could be a lengthy recovery, a lap or two behind the safety car to, uh, to get that car out and hopefully rejoin in place. That looks like it's the 155 entry. Well, that's interesting too because uh, Saren was uh, very quick. Let's take a look at the restart. That is all the way around the outside from the outside of the second row is Carlo Van Dam, right of screen, and then the uh, 458 Ferrari, left of screen, of course, Kennedy Cassiri. And that's uh, Saron in the, uh, the Evo, the Lambo Evo, who got up to third, got bumped a little bit wide, but it looked like on the, uh, just prior to the replay that he was further back in the field. So that's the Arrows Racing entry. That was Sam Cheng, unfortunately... Uh, off the circuit. In fact, Stephen Chan has started, so uh, he was off the circuit there. And uh, just taking a look at uh, Adley Fong back in position three. No, well, that's, uh, that may have been the other Evo. There's a couple of cars with uh, that livery. Of course, yes, Afik Yazid is in position number four for the Racing Spirit PSC Motorsport in the Lamborghini Hurricane Super Trofeo. Just checking Afik's running the new car you can see that with the uh, the scoop on the top he is driving with Saron so Affix taken over for the start lots of uh, weaving going on for drivers trying to keep that temperature up but that all relies on just how quickly they can recover the car now there's a little bit of smoke too oh and contact perhaps oh yeah okay that's a little bit of contact with the barriers but uh, did he fall or was he pushed that's the question you can see a little bit of smoke back further from one of the Ferraris. Could this be a replay of what happened? What transpired that led to the uh, Toyota in the gravel? No, it doesn't appear to be. Okay, so um, we will no doubt get to the bottom of that at some point. So Carla Van Dam leads. Kennedy Kassiri position two. Then Adelie Fong. Afik Yazid is in position four. Tanart's up to position number five in the Estacola PTT racing team entry. Frankie Chung has dropped back to position six. Kandasaka series up to position seven. Aiden Reed back to position number eight. Pitsanu in the Vitana Motorsport Lamborghini Giardo FL2 is in position number nine. Natavud is in position 10 in the now sole surviving Toyota 86. Jack Lambard is in position number 11. He's in the uh, He's also in an FL2. Okay, I was telling you one was a, an REX, but in fact they're both FL2s. So that's the uh, second to last Giardo built by Ryder Engineering. John O'Lester back in position 12, which is unusual because uh, he started from position 10 and we're used to seeing him work his way forward. He's obviously keen to stay out of trouble on his debut for the Vatana Motorsport team, but watch for that car to move forward. Daniel Bilski in position number 13. Tin Sritchai holding down position 14 for the Singer Motorsport team in Thailand entry. Then Sean Varney in the Unix TR Motorsport Porsche ahead of uh, Stephen Chian. We saw him make contact with the barriers, so he may have regained his position. The GDC leader, of course, is Natavud in the uh, Toyota 86. Lights still on on the safety car. It looks like it could be at least another lap. So Stephen Chan has uh, taken, no, he's dropped back to position 17. John O'Lester has hit pit lane, so there seems to be something wrong with his uh, Super Trofeo Evo. That's not great. And Natapong, of course, we saw him in the gravel. So uh, we have lost one. John O'Lester is in pit lane, and poor old Stephen Chan has dropped in the Arrows Racing Porsche to the back after that contact that saw him in the barriers. It looked like on the run up to turn number four. So what can we take from the start? Well, experience counts, doesn't it? And uh, that's where someone like Carlo Van Dam can use that to good effect. There is John O'Lester coming into pit lane. Team's not in too much of a rush to do much. Certainly talking to him to uh, try and determine what the issue is with the young New Zealander. But uh, let's hope that will be back out on track. But uh, Carlo definitely got the run from the second row. He uh, saw the lights, anticipated the uh, the move, 
got a great start and drove around the outside of the front row and pulled in front of both Adelie Fong and Kennedy Kassiri. Natalie now back to position three, the pole sitter. So uh, a little bit of work to do for him. And uh, he will, of course, stop and hand over at the compulsory pit stop window time, or during the compulsory pit stop, to Vincent Florendo, the driver from the Philippines. Yeah, not a lot of pace and hustle with the uh, Vatana team. With John O'Lester, keep the fingers crossed, that isn't an issue. There's the other car that's good to see back out on circuit. That is Aleph Hamden, who started from the pit lane. So this will work in his favour. It's closed up the field a little bit, allow him to be able to move forward in the Be Quick GDC entry and try and gain something from that. 51 minutes to go on the timing monitor that I'm looking at. Shows that Carlo Van Dam's best was a 2.10.48, but of course, pole position was a 2.03.8 by Hong Kong's Adley Fong in the EN Sport by Absolute Audi a little bit earlier today. The second qualifying session, well, that saw uh, Sath Sathian Thiracool. Tanart took the top spot in the Porsche 997 GT3R. So he uh, is currently shown in position five in this race. He will start tomorrow's second 60-minute GT Asia Series race from pole position. But uh, crawling around behind the safety car is not what we wanted to do. Keep a close eye on Carlo Van Dam. Now, safety car lights are out. We haven't seen the recovery process, but safety car lights are out. Welcome, Daniel Lloyd, who's uh, taken over watching. Benny Simonson, a couple of drivers who have had experience in Asia in the past. Of course, Daniel Lloyd a vital part of the championship victory that went to uh, Darrell O'Young a couple of seasons ago for the Craft Bamboo Racing Operation in the mighty Aston Martin Vantage. So uh, good to see he's watching. Nice to see that his career is still kicking on. And uh, now we are go. And look at Carlo. He's picked it up and he's gone. Kennedy has uh, also got the jump, but you can see just how quick that... Uh, Adelie Fong was onto his tail. How much tyre temperature have they kept in those control Michelin slicks? Let's just see. As Tanart is looking pretty racy too, back behind Yazid. So uh, we'll see how that one goes and keep a close eye on that all blue, absolute racing Audi because you can never discount Frankie Chung. Very wide too, he's just opened the door a little bit, has Kasiri. And you don't need to give too many invitations to Adelie Fong before he'll stick the nose down the inside and try and push his way through and take back that position. But on cold tyres, again, another position where experience counts. And Carlo Van Dam, a multiple winner in the GD Asia Series, has gotten that good leap for the Singer Motorsport entry that he'll hand across to uh, teammate Vorovod Birambaki during the compulsory pit stop. John O'Lester still shown in pit lane, so that's disappointing for fans of the young Kiwi. But up front as Carlo pushes out, Kennedy's just done the quickest second sector of the race, so he's keen not to let his uh, mentor get away from him. Because we're just talking about, oh, he's got to be very careful too. Don't want to put all four wheels outside the limits of the circuit. Once you exceed track limits, that can uh, bring you a visit to the uh, stewards. You do it too many times and that could see a post-race penalty. The white, pink and blue car, that is Tanner. The blue car behind him is Frankie Chung. Kandasak Kassiri has crept up ahead of Aiden Reed in that all orange 650S GT3 McLaren for Vatana Motorsport. Quickest, fastest third sector now for Adelie Fong. There he is on screen, immediately behind Kassiri. The lead, eight tenths of a second, four tenths of a second. This gap, well, you can see it. it's no sense counting it. It's about a car length back to Adelie Fong, and he'll be pretty keen to try and make amends and uh, work his way back towards the front of this field. Davide Rizzo, former winner of the GT Asia Series, also watching here the live stream for the opening round of the GT Asia Series. Welcome. It'd be great to see some of these drivers back into racing during the course of season 2018. And what a good start to the year as Carlo Van Dam crosses the line. 2.074, fastest man on track. Kennedy Kassiri, 2.072, seven tenths is the gap between first and second. Dropping back a little bit now, Adelie Fong, 2.075, 2.081 for Afik Yazid in the Racing Spirit PSC Motorsport Huracan Super Trofeo. 
certainly will see that car a lot more during the course of the 2018 season as the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Series kicks off a little bit later in the year right here at Sepang in Malaysia. But up front, it is the man from the Netherlands, now based in Thailand, Carlo Van Dam, integral part of the Singer Motorsport team. Of course, working hard with young carters, a former European champion, one of the best rising karting stars in the world a number of years back now. I won't disclose Carlo's age, but he's no spring chicken anymore, but he certainly hasn't lost the pace nor his passion for the sport and working very hard to improve Thailand motorsport. And you can't deny that he's done that when you look in his rear vision mirror and you've got Kennedy Kassiri flashing the lights now in the mighty Bentley twin turbo V8 built by ProDrive in the UK. And he's closed right up. I don't think you're going to use that tactic, although quite uh, ideally that tactic has been fed to him by Carlo Van Dam. So we'll see how that one plays out. But for... Kennedy Kassiri, I think he could try it. Maybe he's just checking the lights are working in case it gets a little bit dark later, but uh, certainly you're not going to find somebody like Carlo Van Dam, a driver of that quality that has been driving his whole life, rattled by the young tie behind him, but certainly one of the future stars of motorsport in Asia is the man behind the wheel of the number 18 Bentley Continental. Maybe he's got a twitch in his finger. But very close field, back to position eight, the car at the rear of that field, Aidan Reid, the young Australian from Western Australia, driving with the Vatana Motorsport team alongside Chon Sawat in that uh, all orange, and it needs to be orange, it's a McLaren 650S GD3. Immediately ahead of him, Candice Akasiri, he will hand over to Burit Birambakti, who is the reigning Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup AM Cup champion drove very, very nicely for the opening round of that season at Adelaide in South Australia. Very demanding street circuit, popular with the uh, supercars, the V8 supercars. And uh, he did a great job there on his debut in Australia. So it'll be interesting to see how well Burt Birambaki picks up. And if you notice the name Birambaki a few times, well, the uh, Thailand Super Series forms a big part of the GD Asia Series in season 2018 and vice versa. They're cross-entered in both championships and uh, you will see that uh, the Birambakis are very strong supporters of Thailand motorsport. And, uh, whether it's Varavud, Tanavud, uh, or Burit, Pity Birambaki, of course, who drives with our race leader, Carlo Van Dam in Europe. Oh, Carlo, all four wheels off. That might be strike one. He can see what's coming in his rear vision mirror, and probably the one that's sitting comfortably at the moment will be the man in the 55 entry, Adelie Fong. Just wait and see what plays out. 45 minutes to go. It's... Uh, 10 minutes before the pit window opens, but the pro drivers will be starting race one. In most cases, what that means is they will stay out as long as they can in the pit window before they need to come down and do that changeover. If you get to the 35 minute mark and you haven't hit the pits, you're in all sorts of trouble. So uh, they'll be keen to make sure they don't mess that up, but certainly it has been a good start for Carlo Van Dam. That brilliant run off the line down to turn one, go around the outside, which was then the inside for turn two to take the lead away from Kennedy Kassiri and, of course, from Adelie Fong, third in this line of cars at the front of the field. But Afik Yazid's doing a brilliant job. You can't discount that in that uh, car, fourth in line, and that is the Racing Spirit PSC Motorsport entry, the new Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo Evo. It's another one of those in the field, but unfortunately it is in pit lane, and that is John O'Lester driving for Vatana Motorsport. So his debut for the team, not what the young New Zealander was looking for. Position number five, still Tanard, Sathian Thirikul. He is driving the Estcola PTT racing team Porsche 997 GT3R. And of course the 997 GT3R has been a very handy weapon in past seasons. Now up to the 991 GT3R. And that has been uh, turning some very solid results all around Europe and is strong in Asia. 206.893, Carlo Van Dam. Now I'm gonna hazard a guess that that's actually quicker than his qualifying time. No, sorry, 204.37. 206.893, so fastest lap of this race, 206.977. So Kennedy Kassiri's not letting him get away. 207.058 for it's the best for Adelie Fong in position three. This is further back, GDC battle. Just Aleph Hamden working his way forward. That'd be Tim Stritchrai, the front of those cars. And uh, behind Tim would be uh, Saravut in the Racing Spirit PSC Motorsport Hurricane Super Trofeo. That's the Generation 1 car. It doesn't have the big fin on the roof that uh, signals the Evo. 
and he's really pushing hard behind young Tin Sritri, four-time winner. You can see how close they are on screen. I had to discern whether that was the 458 Italia or the 458 Challenge that Tin Sritri was driving, but a four-time winner in the TCR Asia Series in season 2017. Of course, did a little bit of double duty in the Thailand Super Series as well as Kennedy Kasiri. Kept them very much race ready, and uh, they were the two drivers that dominated TCR Asia in season 2017 and have graduated full time to GT competition in season 2018. So great to see them here battling in their respective classes. Here is that battle. There is Tin Sritri on screen. Alef Hamden in the yellow car is making a move forward. He's about to take Sean Varney. That should be the Unix entry immediately in front of him. Yes, it is. Side by side, and he takes the position away because Alef Hamden knows every square inch of this Sepang International Circuit has done many, many miles around here. So uh, a nice job by him. Of course, he started in pit lane, was well behind the eight ball before the start of this race. And uh, a third of the race in, almost, 41 and a bit minutes to go, Alef Hamden has now moved his way up into, I would suggest, position number 13, as the timing monitors will refresh next time around. But up front, Carlo Van Dam, six tenths of a second. So there's really very little in it. Last lap, 207.1 for Van Dam, 207 dead for Kennedy Kassiri. And Sean Varney looks to try and take that position back. No, Alef Hamden knows how to close the door here and he's done just that. So a nice job from the Malaysian driver, driving for the Be Quick Racing Team. And of course, a bit like the Birambaktis, the Be Quick name is very, much synonymous with uh, the Thailand Super Series and motorsport in Thailand. And good to see Hank Kicks, the team boss of the Be Quick Racing Operation. He will take over from Daniel Bilski. And of course, they've driven in an Audi before, but this one is an Audi R8 LMS GT3 Ultra, which is the last specification GT3 car for the Generation 1 Audi R8 LMS GT3. Of course, the car in position three is the second generation car. Very different in the way they were structured and built was running the uh, 5.2 litre V10, naturally, as naturally aspirated mid-mounted engine. Car in front, uh, 4.5 litre V8 engine, naturally aspirated. The last of the V8 naturally aspirated Ferraris, of course the 488 is a twin turbo machine. I'm talking twin turbos, the car that separates them, 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 Bentley Continental muscle. It's uh, a real monster when you hear it go past, certainly moves the air because it's, uh, it's got a big platform, a big silhouette. You certainly know it's there and it, uh, it muscles when it needs to. And Adley Fong knows all about that. He's not used to seeing the back of one. He's used to seeing the dashboard of one as the lights flash again from Kennedy Kassiri. Now that's one of the Vatana Motorsport Lambos, one of the uh, FL2s having a bit of drama a little bit further back in the field. And the lead one of those, Pisanu was, yeah, that's he's dropping back. That would have been the 90 entry, the white car. So he's dropping back a little bit down the order. So he's had a drama or a spin somewhere there. Fastest lap of the race, Cantadi Kassiri, 2.06.67. Last time round as Frankie Chung closes onto the tail of Tanard. Sathian Thirical, you can see him on screen. The S-Cola PTT Racing Team, Porsche 997 GT3R, still a very, very handy car. Uh, he's showing great pace around here. In fact, his lap time last time round, let's check Tanart's lap, 2.07.5, Frankie Chung a 2.07.6. So the uh, man who's done a lot for Chinese motorsport, he's on screen driving for the Absolute Racing Operation, shares with his good mate Sun Jing Zhu, who will take over after the compulsory pit stop. He doesn't seem to be able to do much about it. So the Audis were super quick in practice and qualifying, dominated the top of the timesheets. But uh, seemingly, whether it's the temperature, as uh, Candice Akasiri, Kennedy's brother, is uh, ranging up on the tail of the blue entry. He's the third of the absolute racing supported entries. He, uh, they don't seem to have the pace as now Frankie's taken a dive up the inside and takes the position away. That was a class move from an experienced competitor because Tanart's no slouch either. A lot of sports car experience, including uh, prototype sports cars. But uh, he has uh, just dropped a position and now comes under fire from, from another Audi. That is Kandasek Kassiri, who's made very short work and taken the position away. Next one he'll be under fire from is Aiden Reed. So that has freed up Frankie Chung to push on. And Aiden Reed, just a corner later, has taken the position away. And uh, that now drops 
Tannart sadly back to position number nine. Jack Lemvard a little bit further back in the second of the FL2 Vatana Motorsport Lamborghinis. And it'll uh, be interesting to see what he can make up. Well, you can see he's a fair way back looking at the timings just on left of screen. 8.2 seconds, 20 was 13 seconds back. Car number 88, Jack Lemvard. Whether Tannart has an issue or whether uh, it might be a tyre issue too. Of course, tyres is one area where drivers and teams can make up a lot of ground. You can uh, start tyre temperatures, uh, start tyre pressures rather higher or lower. What that does, that affects how quickly the tyre comes up to temperatures. So sometimes if you want to get away earlier, you want those tyre temperatures up, tyre temperatures up quickly. So pressures usually start a little bit lower. Conversely, or the other way around in fact, Conversely, if you want to uh, get the tyre to come on a little bit later, you uh, may start the tyre pressures a little bit differently. So what you see during the compulsory pit stops is, whilst the teams can change the tyres, they can do very little extra work on the car, you will see many of the crew adjusting the tyre pressure. So what they're doing is they're trying to uh, equalise tyres sometimes to get the most out of the tyre wear and the temperature and uh, send the drivers back out. So whilst I've been waffling, we have seen Adley Fong move into position number two. So uh, Kennedy's dropped well back now. So fastest lap last time around, 2.065. So Carlo Van Dam has responded to Kasiri's pace. But whether Kasiri's made the most of the Michelin tyres on his car early and uh, just starting to drop back a little bit now, whether this hotter ambient temperature is having a greater effect on the turbo cars. You've got to remember it is a twin turbo machine. The Ferrari and the uh, Audi now ahead of it are both naturally aspirated cars and non-turbos. So they may be making better use of the ambient air temperature. Very warm. Track temperatures in the high 30s, ambient temperatures in the uh, mid 30s. And uh, humidity is uh, very high, close to 90% uh, and above. So driver comfort is down and uh, certainly that humidity can have an effect on not just the driver comfort, but certainly the, uh, the cars, and has had a big effect in the past, certainly on cars like the McLaren, and uh, the Bentley was one that did manage to get around that. The Absolute Racing Team running in GT Asia, of course they're the 2016 Teams Champion, they were able to make the most of the uh, performance of the Bentley despite the, uh, the temperature. So the 458 Ferrari, yes Benny Simonson, that is a 458 Ferrari GT3, with Carlo Van Dam behind the wheel, is leading this race. Behind him, Adley Fong for Absolute Racing, the Ian Sport entry that he shares with Vincent Florendo and Candace Cassiri. Candide Cassiri, rather, is in position number three. Candace Cassiri in the third of the Absolute Run Audis, the Singer Plan B entry that he shares with Burt Birenbach, currently in position number six. So that looked like Tanar Sathian Thirical going into the pit garage. And if I just check the timing monitor, yes, he is dropped right down the order and in pit lane. So that's disappointment for the tyre driver and we uh, hope that we'll see the Porsche back out again tomorrow. There is the 458 Italia GT3 of Carlo Van Dam. Pit window is open. It's been open for a bit over a minute. We'll see which drivers do come down pit lane. And Tannart's pitted, he's out. Sean Varney is into pit lane in the number 29 GTC classified Porsche. So to Pisanu in the uh, Lamborghini GT3 FL2, the number 90 entry we saw having a, a bit of a wobble a bit earlier in the race. So uh, he is also in pit lane. Adley Fong doing his job. There they are. We've just called them. Sean Varney is out of the uh, number 29 entry. He'll make way for Thomas Roldorf. They're both silver classified drivers. We're talking about GT Asia, very much a pro-am this year. Bronze classified driver as a minimum. Um, certainly for one driver, as a two driver entry. The second driver can be bronze, silver, gold or platinum. So a full pro driver, but has to have a bronze driver in the car. Very different to past years where we've had uh, silver, silver combinations. And one of those uh, was of course, Sean Thong. Casey Thong has just joined us. Welcome Casey, good to have you with us. Be seeing you very soon. And uh, Sean Thong, of course, alongside Marchie Lee, who's a veteran of the sport. That doesn't look good for the Lambo. It seemed to leave a uh, puddle or a mark behind on the circuit as it left the pits. Aiden Reed on screen, position number seven in the uh, number 28 for Tana Motorsport McLaren. 
Sean Thong and Marchie Lee were regular competitors. Finished second in the 2016 GT Asia Series. Sean Thong taking out the Pro-Am title as a result of that. And of course, the young man from Hong Kong has become one of the real stars of the Asian region in GT3 competition. We look forward to seeing him at various stages during the year. But uh, Aidan Reid, another of the rising young stars. Certainly a lot of young talent coming from the Asian region and from Australia and New Zealand. And they have uh, been a big part of both GT Asia and uh, certainly the Asian region. 29 entry, that is leaving very, very slowly. With uh, Thomas Rudolph behind the wheel. In fact, it's not leaving at all now. It may have been Hank Kicks just in the background there. He'll be waiting for... Uh, Daniel Bilski to come into pit lane. Bilski up to position number nine in the uh, new Be Quick Racing Team Ultra Audi. Talking about that earlier, that is the last of the first generation Audi R8. Of course, the second generation car has been out round for a couple of seasons. And there is one of them monstering the tail of uh, Afik Yazid. That is, of course, Frankie Chum. Now, Frankie, I don't know that he went to sleep at the start, but certainly... He, uh, he missed his opportunity off the start and got caught up in traffic. He was back as far as position number six and uh, has got the work to do now. The legs of that mighty uh, V10 Lambo is just a bit much. Of course, very similar in their platforms and power plants, the, uh, the Audi and the Lamborghini, both products of the Volkswagen Motorsport operation. Of course, part of the Volkswagen Group both Audi and Lamborghini, so uh, fairly closely matched on performance, both running a V10 naturally aspirated engine. There's the 77 entry. It's just had, it's Saravut uh, has just had his compulsory stop. Who else have we got in pit lane? Kennedy Kassiri has come into pit lane now. So Kandasak Kassiri, his brother's just taken a position ahead of him. There he is, the uh, third of the cars in that line behind that battle that's going on on screen between Afik Yazid and Frankie Chung. Carlo Van Dam out by 2.5 seconds now. Well, half this race has been done. We're about to go to the 30 minute mark. So half down, half to go. Adelie Fong, position two, 2.5 seconds further back. So really, Carlo Van Dam's showing great pace. It'll be interesting to see what happens then with the battle between Vorovod Birambakti and of course, Vincent Florendo, who will take over those cars. Likewise, Afik Yazid will uh, be out of the car that he's driven so well up to position number three as it stands right at this very minute and he will uh, step out of the seat and hand over to Saren. See Thorin Cool. he will be behind the wheel as Frankie gets that position, moves up to P3 with just a couple of minutes to go before he jumps into pit lane. He will hand over to Sun Jing Zhu and uh, see how well the number 13 entry can manage to work its way through the field. Another one who uh, was in Adelaide for the opening round of the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup was Sun Jing Zhu. Did a good job there on his debut. In fact, the whole field did on what is a very daunting street circuit. Often claims victims, but certainly the Audi drivers got through very, very cleanly, unlike uh, some of the Ferrari drivers who were in the Asia Pacific Series at the Melbourne Grand Prix just a week ago. There's a certain amount of carnage in that one, but uh, certainly that was some great running and uh, Sun Jing Zhu did a good job so he'll do very well as he takes over. Frankie going to go around again? No, it looks like he's going to come down a bit. No, he's going around one more time. So 29 minutes to go. One of the other drivers, so it may have been Yazid, has come into pit lane. We'll just keep a close eye on that. Or you No, know, he hasn't. In fact, uh, that wasn't the case. So Carlo leads. The lead's out to 3.2 seconds now. Last time round, 2.067. Not much chopped off the pace. He's best, 2.065. They have got that car set up very, very nicely. There's the replay of the 29 entry trying to get out whilst the 77 was trying to come in. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the front man was doing his job. He earned his wage today. Enjoy a uh, nice cool beverage at the end of this race after uh, running up and down pit lane. But certainly Van Dam has made the most of the car and the setup, and he's an integral part in the setup of that car. Be interested to see whether or not that is in fact the car that has won a couple of rounds of the GT Asia series with uh, Pity Berenbachti and Carlo Van Dam in past seasons, now in the colours of the Singer Motorsport Team Thailand entry that he shares with Vorovod Berenbachti. That was Sathian Thirikul, put my teeth back in, who's uh, just rejoined. So that's good news. It's great to see the Porsche back in. 
Now, Burt Birambakti, we're talking about drivers who did a good job at uh, Adelaide, at the street circuit, he did a brilliant job. He was exceptional on his debut there. As uh, the Lambo fires down the inside of the V-Quick Audi, that may well be Hank Kicks now behind the wheel of the car that was being uh, driven to that point by Daniel Bilski. Yep, it's on its outlap, shown in position number 12. So, Candice series in pit lane. Jack Lemvard, he's about to jump up a position. He'll be in pit lane shortly. Natavud in the uh, Toyota Team Thailand entry, the sole remaining Toyota 86 V8s, up to position number 8. Carlo Van Dam is in pit lane now. So the race leader has hit pit lane with a clock Still with a couple of minutes to go before it stops for anybody that hasn't made their uh, stop. I should imagine Adelie Fong will be in, so too Frankie Chung. In fact, they're going to go around another lap. No, they're not. They are also in pit lane. So there at top of screen is the race leader. Behind, that is Adelie Fong. So Adelie looks like he's come down uh, the pit road pretty quickly. So too Frankie Chung. They need to be careful. They get to the rev limiter or the pit limiter by the time they get to the control line. Otherwise, there will be trouble keeping a very close eye on things. Motorsport Asia Limited, who of course run the GD Asia Series, have for almost 10 years. They are responsible too for the Thailand Super Series and the management thereof. Control the balance of performance, which was issued just before the event, and of course run the events with the stewards. James Taylor, the, uh, the boss this weekend, will be keeping a close eye on things. As Kennedy Kasiri, what does he have in store? This is his time to charge. We see it with Formula One, it's the outlap on green tyres sometimes, and it's unlikely they'll be green tyres. Don't think they've changed them on, uh, well, I was just going to say, don't think they've changed them on Carlo Van Dam's car. That's the 89 entry. That is, in fact, Carlo Van Dam's car with Voravud Birambaki behind the wheel. I'm trying to get all my Birambaki sorted. And uh, he will be out very soon to rejoin the fight. It was about a three second advantage as they came to pit lane. Well, I think Adelie Fong might have done something to shorten that on his run down the pit lane. Frankie Chung too making up a bit of ground, but shown as seven and a half seconds back from Carlo Van Dam as they came to the strike. The man we are watching on screen, Kennedy Kassiri, currently shown in position number 11, has just leapt up to position number seven in the Est Cola by AAS Motorsport Bentley Continental GT3 campaigned in recent seasons in the GT Asia series to give them the team's championship in 2016, of course, absolute racing. So welcome to all of you, wherever you are around Asia and around the world. This is the opening round of the 2018 GT Asia series season. Very happy to be able to say that. And we're not enjoying being back with you and uh, showcasing some of the best motorsport. Now there it is, that is the battle effectively for the, the lead. Three cars, Sun Jing Zhu leads. Kennedy Kasiri has now taken the position. That was Voravud Birambakti, who initially had the lead on the run into turn one, but the pace of Kennedy Kasiri has really wound up. He's a couple of laps into his stint. He is likely to take this position away. So whilst it shows that Voravud is leading, well, he's got up to turn four, has taken the position away from Sun Jing Zhu. The young tie is on an absolute charge. Who can do anything about this as Voravud now looks at the inside of Sun Jing Zhu. Fingers crossed that comes through okay. No, Sun Jing Zhu better placed for the right-hander to uh, turn six and regains the position. But up front, keep an eye on that storming Bentley. Will the temperature affect them as the absolute racing team watch on? Of course, they have their three cars and know only too well what the performance of that big Bentley is like. The Arrows Racing Team GDC Porsche moves to the inside to allow Kennedy Kassiri to take the position and try and work his way forward. So looking at the timing monitor, the pit window has closed. Effectively, what we have now is the race leader on screen. That is Kennedy Kassiri, who's back in position 11. By the time the timing monitor refreshes, I fully expect to see that it will be the number 18 entry on screen the Est Cola AAS Motorsport entry take the top spot in this race. Second would then go to this great battle emerging between Sun Jing Zhu and Voravud Birambakti, who took over from race leader Carlo Van Dam. Toyota 86 leaving racing room to his rivals. Of course, they should be at the front of the GTC field 
The order is still working itself out. The timing monitor is just refreshed. And of course, Kennedy Kassiri takes over the lead of this race. Sunjing Zhu position two. Carlo Van Dam, well, it's Vorovod Birambakti all over the tail of Sunjing Zhu. He's going to try and affect the same move that Carlo Van Dam did off the start. Go around the outside into turn one to be on the inside for the left hand to turn two. No, nothing doing there. Vorovod just needs to wait, uh, wait his time. There is Frankie Chum keeping a close eye on his good mate. Sun Jing Zhu, who still holds down position two. Vincent Florendo has taken over now from Adley Fong, position number four. Burit Birambakti is in position five. So that's three absolute racing Audis in the top five. Aiden Reed has handed over to uh, Chonsawat by now. She's still shown as Aiden Reed, but certainly Chonsawat is behind the wheel of the all orange Fatana Motorsport McLaren in position number six. Daniel Bilski, it's likely to be Hank Kicks, is up to position number seven. And uh, Jack Lemvard, no, he's handed over to Fongthep in the Vitana Motorsport Giardo FL2 GD3 is in position number nine now, position 10, Akihiro Asai in the Vitana Motorsport, the second of the FL2 GD3. So that'll be a great battle too, to see how well they can move themselves up the order. But certainly... This is a great battle for position two, but I think it's almost game over at the front of the field. 2.3 seconds down the road now is Kennedy Kassiri, and the young tyre would like nothing better than to begin his season with the Est Cola AAS team than taking victory. Of course, we'll be driving with Woody Korn in Thrapuvasak, who was a regular with the GD Asia Series with the Absolute Racing Team alongside Englishman Duncan Tappy. They're on the podium, certainly at Bururam, and uh, were real contenders. There is the absolute crew. Oh, there's a good battle emerging further back. Oh, so Vorovod's had a problem. There's been a hiccup there. I thought I saw something at the top of the screen just as I went back to checking the timing monitor a couple of corners back, and that has opened the door and given breathing room now to Sun Jing Zhu. This might be all he needs. So Vorovod's now under fire from, uh, well, from Vincent Florendo, but he's got his, uh, his cousin Burrit not too far behind. So it'll be a battle of the Birambaktis at the front of this field for a place on the podium. But Sung Jing Zhu's been let free. He's got clean air. Look at that lead now he has. There is Vorovod. Behind him is Vincent. Immediately behind him is Burit Birambaki. There's Chonsawat now coming past the Arrows Racing GDC Porsche. And Sam Cheng has made up a little bit of position. Alef Hamden certainly towards the front of that field, but leading the GDC. Just check where the uh, Toyota Racing Team entry is. So certainly uh, Natapong is out. The second entry has dropped through. He's just come in for his, well, he's just leaving from his compulsory pit stop. If that's true, he's certainly either one, missed the window, or uh, two, as Naoki is behind the wheel, the Japanese driver, may have had a problem. So they've dropped right back down the order. So that would tend to suggest that after starting from pit lane, Aleph Hamden is leading the GTC classification here with uh, under just under 20 minutes to go. You can see what a lead. 4.3 seconds now to uh, Kennedy Kassiri. Car number 39 is under investigation for breaching the pit lane speed. Car 39 is Naoki. So, okay, that was the Toyota Team Thailand entry. Now, let's hope that they made it. I missed them on the order just to see whether or not they had been in on time. Alessio Piccarello. Now, there's a name that uh, we welcome to the coverage, the reigning Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup champion, of course, racing over in, uh, well, he raced in the States just recently and did a very good job at Sebring. Nice to see him here. Big thumbs up, of course, for Jingzu. And uh, a lot of the absolute racing crowd will be very happy to see that uh, Alessio is keeping tabs on what's going on. But there's not much anybody can do right now, young man, about the bloke behind the wheel of the big thumping Bentley. And uh, Kennedy Kassiri, Maybe a couple of people discounted him with the uh, hot shots in the Audi joining the field this weekend. But, uh, well, he looks to have done the job. 5.7 seconds up the road from Sun Jing Zhu, but a 2.07.8 last time round. 2.09.1 for Sun Jing Zhu. And uh, Vorovod Birambakti is now 5.9 seconds back from uh, the car on screen. The all blue number 13 absolute racing entry. Burit Birambakti is just 1.6 seconds behind Vorovod, so uh, 
that will open up an, a very, very interesting battle. Again, we're talking about Burt Birambakhti being the reigning AM Cup champion in the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup. And uh, certainly the opening round of that championship this year on the streets of Adelaide in Australia, that very demanding street circuit, he was a real sensation, battling with some very experienced Australian drivers who had been around that circuit countless times. In fact, one of their rivals had done 18 separate events at the uh, circuit, and uh, Burrett was right in the mix battling at the front of that field. So keep a close eye on the Thai driver driving in the Singer Plan B entry. Oh, that, is that Vurevud? No, that's the 23 entry. That, uh, well, the 23 entry, that was the car that Tim Switchrod started. It's another of the Birambaktis. Tanavud Birambakti, very similar livery. We are talking about that. Easy to get the two cars mixed up. It'd be interesting to see where that is, whether there's been a mechanical failure, but certainly uh, the car is seemingly stopped. Will that bring out a safety car for recovery? Or will we see the remaining 17 minutes run through without a safety car intervention? So that's disappointing for Tanavut. Was shown in position 13, now dropping down the order. He was second in GTC class. So for he and Tins Fritchray, they were right in this battle. So that'll be uh, valuable championship points that unfortunately for them, they won't take into tomorrow's second race. Of course, the second round of the GT Asia series will be tomorrow, April 1st. No April Fool's joke, this one. 2.30 p.m. So make sure you join us for the full coverage as this great battle. This is Burt Birambakti and Vorovud Birambakti. They are right in the mix, the two Singer Motorsport entries. And uh, what does Vorovud have for his cousin? Certainly Burt has been a hot shot in the last 12 months has progressed very very nicely loves the Audi and has done very very well there's Carlo Van Dam he is uh, keeping close eye on what's going on because he can take some level of ownership of the man at the front of the field it says it's Vudicorn in Thrapuvasak behind the wheel now let's just see because haven't heard too much from Vudi this weekend it's just swapped over to Vudi it's a two driver entry well Vudicorn's uh, no slouch at all as a uh, former podium finisher in the GD Asia series. Burrett is really applying the blowtorch to the back of the number 89 Ferrari 458, and he is keen to try and work his way forward. This is for second position in this race, and he's taken it, oh, and forced Vurevud wide. That was a very, very aggressive move, and lucky not to have seen the 89 entry, the car that led the opening stanza of this race off into the gravel, so that was a big, Tough, aggressive move from Burt Birambakti on Vorovud to take away position number two. A great save too from Vorovud to make sure he got through on that one and uh, continue on. But up front, it says it's Vudicorn now and not Kanadika Siri. I will run with that. So Vudicorn has taken over position number one. A great charge from the compulsory pit stop. We didn't see the driver change, or if we did, I apologise for that. Here is the replay of this move. Not really a passing position. Vorovud kind of left the door open, and Burrett went, well, that's all I need, cuz. Thanks for the opportunity. Fired down the inside, and uh, whether they made contact, it was only light, but uh, he was able to carry on and continue, and that was what we wanted to see. So lights flashing. Maybe that's Woody telling me, hey, it's me. Remember me? I don't do too badly behind the wheel of one of these things. It's not Kennedy. As a team, we are going to be very difficult to beat in this uh, championship. 8.7 seconds up the road from Sun Jing Zhu, who is sharing, of course, with his good mate Frankie Chung, watching there in the pit garage. As Burt Berenbarki now takes over in the car that he shares with another Kasiri. It's likely to be two Kasiris on the podium this time around. It's not the first time it's happened with the Thailand Super Series, but it'll be a first for the GD Asia Series. Kandasek Kasiri of course, is a very valuable addition to that Singer Plan B by Absolute Racing Audi entry. Vurevud Birambakti back in position four. There is, uh, oh, that is Frankie Chung in the middle. He's got the headset on, so no doubt keeping tabs on what's going on with, uh, with Sun Jing Zhu. And uh, behind him, of course, was Adley Fong just keeping tabs on uh, what's going on. So the Absolute Racing team having a good look at what's happening right at the moment. Now, where is Sun Jing Zhu? He's got Burr Bur and Barkti behind him. So last time round, as an indication, 208.89 for Sun Jing Zhu, 208 dead 
for Burit Birambaki. So we have uh, 12 minutes to go in this race, or 13 minutes to go on uh, your monitor. 13 minutes to go in this race. Certainly there is time there to be gained. Now we just take a check in with Vincent Florendo, who's sharing the 55 EN Sport by absolute entry with Adley Fong. He's six seconds down the road, 2.11 dead last time round. Forward Birambaki looks like he's dropped off the pace, but of course he lost ground and a little bit of space then, 2.10. So here's your two leaders, the outright leader, that is uh, Kanadika Siri, or in, uh, Woody Korn uh, in front, and uh, behind them that is Aleph Hamden in the uh, Be Quick Racing Porsche that is leading the GTC category. Currently, Aleph Hamden is shown in position number 12. Fongtrap immediately in front of him in the uh, Vatana Motorsport Lamborghini Gallardo and Saravutz in the Racing Spirit PSC. Huracan Super Trofeo is in position number 10. And that was throwing out some awesome flames yesterday. So some great shots from the Bugger Shots team that support the GD Asia series and TCR Asia of uh, the car blowing fuel or burning fuel out the back under deceleration. And of course, that is one of the uh, highlights. 206444. Burit Birambakti, fastest lap of this race, if you don't mind. Now, you've got to consider that guys like Adley Fong and uh, Carlo Van Dam started in this race. Fastest man, Burit Birambakti, 206.44. He is really closing down the man in front. So 206.4 versus a 208.7 for Sun Jing Zhu. The gap now, 2.6 seconds. Now, this is the battle further back. That is the uh, mighty McLaren. Chonsawat is in position number six. And, uh, well, what's happened there? Sauron's actually moved forward in the Super Trofeo Evo immediately in front of him. So that was a position change. So the all-black Lamborghini has taken the position away from the McLaren with a bit over 10 minutes to go in this race. So 206.44, that's an impressive lap from Burit Birambakti. By uh, contrast, 206.5 was the fastest lap early by... Uh, Kennedy Kassiri in the uh, Bentley. And uh, Adley Fong's quickest lap was a 206. Adley Fong, Adley Fong, 2067. 2064, the quickest for Carlo Van Dam. So that really puts into perspective just what we're talking about with Burit Birambakti just that little bit earlier. He really has kicked on very, very nicely as a GT driver, and a lot of that. Uh, it can come back to drivers like Carlo Van Dam, but certainly Candice Akasiri, who's been a great addition to that team and a good driver coach too for Burit Birambakti. And proof is in the pudding. He was great at Adelaide for the Audi Sport R8 LMS Cup season opener, and he's doing a very good job here. With 10 minutes to go, less than 10 minutes to go now, what can he do about the gap to the man in front of him, Sun Jing Zhu? Well, there it is on screen. Forget about talking about it. This is almost fait accompli. You would suggest that... The man in the second of these cars, Burit Birambakti, is right on the number. He's just punched out a 2.068, so four tenths off his best the lap prior. He is really going to uh, push Sun Jing Zhu, and you'd expect this to be a position change. So the Absolute Racing team will have let uh, Jing Zhu know that he's there, and Burit will be pressing hard to take that position. Not sure there's much he can do about the man up front. Although, Vuti has done a 2.078 last time round. He's capable of doing 2.06s and certainly low 2.07s, but uh, if Burt can be pushing out laps like this, he's really going to have to work it. He needs to be more than a second a lap faster because he's currently, well, he's over 10.8 seconds back from the race leader. So it's going to come down to this fight and just how quickly he can get around Sun Jing Zhu. It's only taken him half a lap. It's really made up the ground. Now, no aggression this time, Burrit. He's got the lights flashing. Don't think you'll go around the outside. Of course, Sun Jing Zhu's completely able to protect his line, but uh, Burrit will be hoping he doesn't hold him up too much and allow him to get through and uh, maybe try and make another position further forward. But what a storming drive from Burrit Birambakti. No more aggression. We saw that with Voravut a little bit earlier. That's dropped the Ferrari driver a little bit further back as they made contact. That was a very hard move that uh, could have ended badly between the two drivers, the two cousins. We don't want to see any more of that activity. It was down at turn seven. And this is a better place to be making moves. 
on the run from turn 14 to the final corner. Go down the inside at the hairpin final corner. Hopefully do it without locking a brake. Oh, and he's gone wide and opened the door. And Sunjing says, thanks very much, Bert. I'll take that. Let's just try that again one more time with feeling. Oh, Aleph Hamden left to a screen. The Be Quick Porsche has come to a stop with seven and a half minutes to go. That is tragic for the man who'd worked himself from a start in pit lane. As Burt looks to go in under brakes. Has Jingzu gone in too deep under brakes this time? No, he's come across. He could always close the door on the left-hander. Turn two. And uh, now he's going to have to do it all over again. Well, that effectively puts a chance at racing at the lead and taking the fight to Voodikorn out of the question. 11.1, 11.7 seconds rather now the lead to the mighty Bentley. So it'll come down to this. Now the sole remaining Team Thailand 86 V8 is uh, locked a wheel. Hopefully it's not engine oil. No, it seems to have locked a wheel. So uh, this battle will rage on and uh, full points to Jingzu keeping the door closed and for being able to position himself to take that position back. Burritz, very aggressive. We'll see how the move works this time. But of course, they're both absolute racing entries. They're gonna do it all over again with a second 60 minute race tomorrow. So they don't wanna do too much silly stuff. But, uh, oh, there he goes, up the inside this time and comfortably takes the position away, closes the door, gets on the brakes, nowhere for Jingzu to go and uh, that is a nice clean move from Brimbarkti. Well-deserved position two, set up very nicely by Kandasak Kassiri. So Kassiri's uh, one, two at the end of this race if things carry on the way they are. Footy corn in for Puvasak at the front of this field. So a very nice job by by him. So uh, Thomas Raldorf, we saw him have trouble leaving pit lane. Uh, just checking in the 29 entry, the Unix TR Motorsport Racing Team entry, the 991 GT3 Cup GDC entry, but they're now back on top in GDC with that retirement of Aleph Hamden. Now I hope the Be Quick Racing Team can get the car sorted. We've got uh, just under 24 hours before the second round of the GD Asia series. Aaron Chen watching on. But there is, uh, with the headset, Frankie Chung. Here's a replay of this great move by Burit Birambakti. He pulled that very off very nicely down at turn nine and uh, took the position away from Sun Jing Zhu. And uh, there's Adley in the background. And uh, coached, no doubt, by Frankie Chung. Jing is doing a good job. So, uh, corn leads. Burit Birambakti now P2. Sun Jing Zhu, Sun Jing Zhu. P3, Vorovod Birambakti in position number four. Saron is up to position five in the Racing Spirit PSC Motorsport uh, Hurricane Super Trofeo Evo. Chonsawat in position number seven. I who I've missed, sorry, Vincent Florendo, of course, who's sharing the 55 entry with Adelie Fong. Chonsawat position number seven. Akihiro Asai has worked his way forward in the second of the Lamborghini GT3, the FL2 GT3s, built by Ryder Engineering, up to position number eight. Hank Kicks is into position number nine on their debut with the new Audi R8 LMS GT3 Ultra. Of course, Daniel Bilski started that car. And Saravut in the uh, Huracan Super Trofeo, the 77 entry, the flamethrower. That is in position number 10. And we've got uh, Bong Thep in the uh, Vatana Motorsport, the second of the GT3, the FL2 Giardo is in position number 11. Position 12, Thomas Raldor is leading GDC. Position 13, Sam Cheng. And the Arrows Racing entry, a great result for them. And it's saying Naoki's on another outlap in the uh, Team Thailand Toyota entry, the Toyota 86 V8. So they may be suffering some level of drama. Aleph Hamden, of course, a retirement. So 13 cars, 14 cars still running in this field. Although, of course, the uh, Toyota Team Thailand entry shown as two laps down now as Voodikorn comes around one more time. Probably two more laps in this. Hits the line one more time. Comfortable lead, out now by 15.8 seconds, the tie driver in the Est Cola by AAS Motorsport entry. Now Sun Jing Zhu's shown in position number two. Something's gone on, on track. You can't see it here on your monitors. Mine, well, you can. It's showing now, car number 13, back to position two, Burit Birambakti's dropping down the order. He is uh, 20 seconds behind now. So he has had a drum as he run off the circuit, 
Has there been contact with a back marker? Burrett was on fire, he's pumping out fast laps and course, of course he is the fastest man in this race, faster than Carlo Van Dam, faster than Adelie Fong, faster than Frankie Chung. But uh, currently he's uh, dropping down the order, you can see on screen, 20 seconds behind. What has transpired whilst we were uh, looking at the race leader circulating, Vudikorn Inthrapuvasak in the uh, Thailand Bentley entry. The Est Cola by AAS Motorsport Machine, untroubled up front despite the heat, despite the humidity. Absolute Racing, who ran three of these cars in GT Asia. They won the 2016 Teams Championship with Vudikorn as part of that team. They were right on top of the performance of these cars. Moved one of them on to the AAS Motorsport team for Kennedy Kasiri and Vudikorn in the Thailand Super Series in GT Asia this year. And... Uh, it has run effectively flawlessly right through this race and great to see such a solid result for the Thailand team. Burrit Birambakti fortunately still shown in position number three. So he's dropped down the order one spot. So he's had a problem but is continuing to circulate. So it'll be interesting to find out from Burrit after this race what has happened to the young Thai driver and what a great job he has done so far this year. Worked his way solidly into position two and has dropped back through, but just reward too for Sun Jing Zhu being coached by Frankie Chung. There he is on screen in position number two in the number 13 absolute racing entry that the two drivers share. Back up to position two, 16 seconds down on the race leader. Purid's making a charge. You should see him top of screen. There he is again, trying to come back. There's one more lap in left in this race. This would be the last lap of the opening round of the 2018 GT Asia Series, and what a great race it has been. Carlo Van Dam dominated the opening stanza of the race, stopped to hand over to Vorovod Birambakti. They came out still right on the race lead with this car, with this car rather, of course, with Sun Jing Zhu behind the wheel. But behind them was the charging Vudikorn. They'd stopped early, and uh, Kennedy Kasiri, who'd uh, been right in the mix, was second early. He hung onto the tail of his mentor, Carlo Van Dam, handed over to Vudikon. Vudikon charged out, got up to speed, got the tyres up to temperature, got himself up to temperature, and uh, of course with Vorovod rejoining, there's Vorovod on screen, currently in position number four, and with Sun Jing Zhu just fresh into the car. They weren't dialed in, but Vudikon was. He charged past them at turns one and two, and uh, took the lead of this race, and has just continued to eke out a lead. It looked like Burt Birambakti may have been able to make some sort of indent on that lead, but unfortunately for the Thai driver, he uh, had an issue last time round and dropped well back behind Sun Jing Zhu. Got it all in front of him again, may well close that down. It's shown as 2.5 seconds, that battle between second and third. But certainly Sun Jing Zhu will be hoping to hang on. Here it is, through turn 14 for the last time. Footy Corn in Thrapuvasak, very experienced GT campaigner, doing a fantastic job at the front of this field. The S Cola by AAS Motorsport team watching on, watching the stream, keeping tabs on their man as he comes through the final corner to greet the chequered flag. And what a great start to the 2018 GT Asia Series season. Footy Corn in Thrapuvasak and Kennedy Kasiri take victory on the first round. Second across the line, will it be Sun Jing Zhu? Or will it be Burrit Birambakti? It's Jingzu has got through the last corner ahead of Burrit. He knows what he needs to do to stay ahead. Crosses the line in position two. A great job by he and Frankie Chung. Third across the line, Burrit Bur Birambakti and Kandasaka Siri. Fourth across the line after that big battling move from his cousin to take the position away, Vuravud Birambakti. Saron across the line for the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Evo. There he is coming across the line for position number five for the Racing Spirit PSC Motorsport team. Sixth across the line, Vincent Florendo, who started from the pole position with Adley Fong, and then behind them was Chonsawat sharing with young Australian Aidan Reid in the Vatana Motorsport McLaren 650S. Akihiro Asai in the Vatana Motorsport Lamborghini Guiardo FL2 GD3 will take position number eight. Position number nine, Hank Kicks on his debut with their team's new Audi R8 LMS GD3 Ultra. The Absolute Racing team offering their congratulations. Of course, a lot of those crew have been involved in the performance of uh, 
and the operation of the big Bentley Continental GT3 in Asia in recent seasons, so they'll be in part happy to see that that uh, tradition carries on, certainly for the opening round of the 2018 GT Asia Series, but also uh, finishing, lamenting somewhat, finishing second and third, and in fact sixth in the three absolute racing Audis here this weekend. Position number 10, Sarah Vut in the Racing Spirit PSC Lamborghini Super Trofeo. Fongtep in the second of the Giardo FL2 GT3s. Thomas Raldorf will take the Unix TR Motorsport Racing Team entry to victory in the GTC category and the car he shares with Sean Varney. Uh, behind them, Sam Cheng and uh, Stephen Chan. They will take the second place position for GTC and uh, will be classified position number 13. And Naoki did manage to get across the line in the Toyota Team Thailand entry for third in GTC, albeit a number of laps down. There is the Sepang International Circuit for 5.5Ks, uh, albeit thereabouts. And uh, in the heat, it was the Kasiri Intrapuvasak combination in the Bentley that took the victory. Frankie Chung and Sunjing Zhu second. Kandasak Kasiri Birumbakti in position number three. Carlo Van Dam Voravod Birumbakti position four. Afik and uh, Sarit Thernakul in the Evo are in position number five. Of course, Saren did that uh, final sector. Vincent Florendo and uh, Adelie Fong in position number six. A little bit further down the order, see John O'Lester unfortunately didn't get too far. He had a drama early. Sathya mm -hmm. Thernakul was right there uh, in on the pace early, but. Uh, came down pit lane before the compulsory pit stops and took a while to get going. There is the winner. Let's take a look at the face of the driver who will step out of the car. I'm tipping it's a Bentley uh, factory race suit. No, it's not, but that's uh, Kennedy Kassiri just there. With his, no, it's Frankie Chum, in fact. Is that footy corner at the Rapuvasak? I can't see Kennedy Kassiri, but I certainly see Sunjing Zhu. What's going on there? That may well be, in fact, Kennedy Kassiri. Let's have a look at the eyes. No, we've dropped the camera out. So uh, we'll soon uncover the stig. Who will it be? That looks like it is Woody, in fact. That is Woody Corner for Proofersack. You can see it written there on the helmet. Can't see Kennedy Kassiri. He's uh, probably taking a well-deserved rest after that strong opening stint. But certainly Vuti did a great job to work himself through and take the victory. In fact, a very dominant victory for the opening round of GT Asia and the Thailand Super Series. 17.1 seconds down the road from the combination of Sun Jing Zhu and Frankie Chun. Frankie will be chuffed with that. A great result for the two of them. Jing Zhu will be very, very happy to take that uh, P2 GT Asia Series trophy away. Ingo Mata are a big part of the absolute racing operation with Fabian Fior down there uh, Having a look at the car that uh, used to be in his stable. Fabian just coming across to greet him. There he is in the background. And uh, third to the second of the entries from Absolute Racing. Frankie taking a well-deserved drink. Burit Birumbakti and Candice Akasiri, who at one stage hurled second in this race, but uh, were forced to drop back down the order. So uh, hopefully we might hear from the race winners fairly fairly soon, get an idea of uh, how the race played out, but uh, somewhat disappointment for uh, Voravud Virumbakti and um, Carlo Van Dam after a brilliant start by Carlo to get off the line and charge into turn one in the lead, handed over to Voravud, uh, he was holding down a position in uh, on the podium, in P3, I'm going to go to the podium presentation by the look of it, I'm going to hear from the drivers, and uh, Burt forced his way through to take the position away, ultimately got up to P2 and then a couple of laps from home had an issue. We'll find out what that was and drop back to P3 at the flag. But a great start to the season for the 2018 GT Asia Series. Let's take a little replay. Here's the start. Watch the car. The Ferrari rider screen jumps out around Kennedy Kassiri and takes the lead. Does Carlo Van Dam. Very wide, really pushed hard. Kennedy did everything he could to try and catch him, but then we had this issue, the 38 Toyota Team Thailand entry. And that was unlucky for uh, Sam Cheng to uh, be forced wide whilst they were behind safety car. He regrouped, they wound up finishing second. 
Now, uh, obviously the race result isn't official until it's declared by the stewards. They may be looking into a couple of incidents, and certainly track limits will be one of them. Safety and Thiracool was right in the mix too. There he is holding out Frankie Cheng early. And he did a good job, but was forced down pit lane with a technical issue before the compulsory pit stop window opened, and that uh, created a little bit of an issue. There's the 29 entry. That struggled to get going, Thomas Reldorf, after the compulsory stop, but fortunately they did, because in that battle for GTC honours, they have come out on top. Here is the fight after uh, Vorovud and Sun Jing Zhu got out of pit lane. Vudikorn had charged past. He got past Vorovud by the uh, end of turn two, and by turn four, he was through on Sun Jing and into what was the effective lead. Then the 23 entry, Tonavud uh, Birambakti had dramas. He was forced to pull out after such a great job. This is this monstrous, big, muscling move by Buru Birambakti to take first Vorovud for position four, and then Sun Jing Zhu for position three with a comfortable move, or position two rather. But ultimately, it uh, didn't work out. He came off the circuit somewhere out of sight from the cameras and allowed uh, Sun Jing back into the uh, second position. Jing Zhu crossed the line in P2.